Hello. This is the best tactic on FM21. Trust me on that. And yes, there is a download link. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel if you're new here. If you are new here from this video today, let me just introduce myself. My name is Clates. I make Football Manager videos here on YouTube. I also live stream over on Twitch as well. Today, I've got something new for the channel. It's the first time I've done this. But I'm going to do a tactics video. So you guys have asked for it in Twitch chat, in comments here on YouTube, and even over on TikTok. Can we have your tactic? And today, for the first time, the answer is yes. Here is the ultimate, in my opinion, but I really think it is, the ultimate 442. Let's get into it. A few credentials for the tactic then before you go away and download it. I know that you want to know things like, I'm in my fourth season with Wigan and I've signed Pedro. Will I win the league? Here's a few things that I've managed to achieve with it so that hopefully you can make your own mind up and decide, is this the tactic for you? So as I touched upon before, this tactic has become my go-to in terms of FM21 tactics this year. I've used it now in a number of different saves, including a couple of the saves that I'm currently playing through. For example, over on Twitch, my Twitch save is Hereford FC, a team that starts in the Vanarama National League North, and we've taken them to the Premier League. In fact, we've taken them to the top of the Premier League. We're currently four points clear above Manchester United with a game in hand, looking like we should go on and win that Premier League title this year. And for the majority of this save, the past six or seven seasons, I'd say, we've been using this 4-4-2, slowly building towards getting the best player in each position and becoming dominant, which now we just about are. We are, of course, top of the Premier League, as I mentioned. We're also still in the Champions League, still in the FA Cup. We've won an FA Cup. We've won a Europa League all through using this 442 system. Alongside that, I've also used it in restoring Schalke, a save here on YouTube, where we were Schalke and we got relegated in the first season because they're very bad. But then we've been promoted back to the Bundesliga. And now, in our first season back in the top flight, we're challenging for the title because we've switched to start using this 442. That's not the only reason. We've recruited well, etc., etc., as well for this tactic. But it goes to show you can be successful with a team that is newly promoted. Alongside both of those saves as well, I've also had success with this tactic in PvP, online football manager, which is very interesting. If you want to get one over your mates, this 442 works. At least I've used a very slightly modified version of this and been successful winning things like Streamer Showdowns, which is an online competition that I take part in. It's, it's good online and offline, which is what you want in a tactic, really. As always, if you think you'll find this useful and you want to see more videos like this in the future, then please do consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free for you to hit that subscribe button. And it really does help me out. It lets me know that you want to see and you enjoy this type of video. Also, leave me a like, leave me a comment because they really do help with things like the algorithm. But let's go and see how this 442 sets up in-game. Okay, then. So here you see it in-game. I'm going to use my Hereford save here to show you this tactic because I think I'm getting to the stage now where I'm getting the right players in the right roles. And I want to talk you through all those things as I show you the tactic. The first thing you will notice by the 442 here is that it is very much a standard 442. By that, I mean, there's no fancy asymmetrics here. I've not pushed up the wingers. I've not dropped the midfielders. It's very much a flat midfield four, a flat defensive four, and then two strikers up front. It's very, very Mike Bassett. Yes, I know. The way that this is going to work is I will show you the team instructions first of all. They're slightly boring, really, to go through them. They're very run of the mill. A few things to point out, though, and let you know. And then I'm going to go through each player role because as we go through each of these player roles and in each of these positions, I want to talk to you about what I look for a player in each of these places because there are certain attributes and certain things about the player that will make them more successful than others. And I believe that that is the key to making this tactic successful. Okay, so in terms of instructions then, my mentality for the team is to be attacking. I think on FM21, it, it just pays to be attacking. If you want to go for a defensive setup or you want to go for a counter-attacking setup, I just don't think it's as effective. The meta is to be attacking and take the game to them. Very much in the same way that if I go to already out of possession, having high lines, much higher line of engagement, it is the meta. It's what works the best. And that's what I use in this tactic here. We do use the offside trap. We use tighter marking and we prevent goalkeeper distribution as well. Back to in possession. The most important part about this, the others you can maybe tweak if you want to. Although if you keep it like this, I know it will work. The most prominent thing to mention here is lower tempo. Lower tempo 
is so effective. They do those little passes around and then they'll just launch one and you'll be in behind. The lower tempo here, slightly lower, I think is the most important, especially when you pair it with this slightly shorter passing directness. That's the key thing. The rest on here, run at defense. We've got fairly wide attacking width, pass into space, play out of defense and work ball into the box. Low crosses because it really doesn't matter what you pick here. Low crosses and the match engine will ignore it anyway and they will cross it like normal. Low crosses, I think, gets rid of maybe a few errors in the crossing that they go for. And it's a little bit more reliable. So that's what I use low crossing here. In transition, counter press counter. It's just the most effective method. It really does seem that way. We distribute to the fullbacks. We throw it long. And that is all we have set on this one there. Those are the instructions. Like I said, they're pretty run of the mill. They're pretty standard. They work. Go with those they work. Okay, so going through position by position, I will click on the position so that you can see which role I'm using and also if there are any player instructions on them too. So goalkeeper, fairly run of the mill. We've got a sweeper keeper here set to support. If you're going to play with those high lines, you do want to have a goalkeeper that can sweep in behind. So look for a goalkeeper that is adept at doing that. And the one thing that I really look for in a goalkeeper, slightly apart from the role really, is I look for a goalkeeper that has really good reflexes. It seems to make a really big difference in game. And alongside that, it's really useful to have a goalkeeper that's got really good aerial reach and or great height. I mean, that's going to become a theme as we go through this video. Big, tall, strong, fast players they're really good in FM21. That goes for the goalkeeper as well. So I've got a six foot eight goalkeeper here in Sunday Williams, and he does a really good job. So that's what I look for in a goalkeeper. Moving through then into the defense. Let's start with our fullbacks, which are wingbacks set to support. If I click on them, you can see their player instructions there, crossing from byline, getting further forward, running with the ball, etc. It's the same for both sides. And here, slightly surprisingly, I think the type of player that I look for is a very well-rounded player. A player that is good on the ball, has decent passing. You see here, Alan Radas, he's got 14 passing, which is pretty good for a fullback slash wingback. Good crossing, which becomes very rare when you've got regen players, but good crossing and somebody who can get on the ball and be good. Don't look for pure pace, which goes against what I'm going to say for other positions. Obviously, it is great if they are pacey, but I think an all-rounder, a well-rounded player here at the fullback positions is very important. I shouldn't need to mention it, but I will also mention for your right back, make them right footed. Your left back, make them left footed. That is actually really, really important. The same applies actually for your centre backs. As I click on them here, they both have the same roles. They both have the same instructions, ball playing defenders set to defend your left center back should be left footed as you can see by pole to go via here your right center back should be right footed it's not the end of the world and sometimes it's difficult to find really good players in these positions but if you can make them it is definitely useful which is why as we start to try and dominate the league here i'm looking for these little little minute details and they are really important as with the goalkeeper as i mentioned big tall players for center back are so so useful not just defensively from set pieces but also attacking wise with set pieces i rest a lot of my hopes on set pieces in fact i made a video all about set pieces which is in the card above me over here look if you want to check that out i get i don't know how many goals a lot of goals maybe 30 percent of my goals in a season through set pieces it is so useful as you can see here, Paul Sogovia has got 17 jumping reach and he's six foot six. Alongside my other defender, Sitikov, who's a bit shorter. But he's also very good on the ball and great otherwise, but does have 17 jumping reach. It's very, very useful. In fact, I want to show you Sitikov and Paul between them. Look, Sitikov's got eight goals this year. Paul's got nine goals this year. We're in April. They're going to probably get 10 goals each from centre back. Just goes to show how important that can be. Basically, you want giants. On to the midfield. Now, after what I said for the fullbacks, where I said I want them to be well-rounded and good footballers, ignore all of that for your wingers. For your wingers, you want them to be, or I want them to be, pure pace machines. Think sprinters. And then anything else on top of that is a bonus. For example, I've had great success in different saves using Adama Traore this year. And if you have a look at his attributes, he is just really, really quick and then has nothing else, but he's effective in the match engine. Botter here is my current right winger in my Hereford save. You see he's got the 20 agility, 19 acceleration, 17 pace. Anything else on top of this is a bonus. For example, the crossing, the dribbling. Dribbling more important than others, I will say. But if they can run, 
They will run with the ball. They will carry it forward. They will get to the byline. They will make things happen. That's what you want from both wingers. Obviously, you want your right winger to be right footed. You want your left winger to be left footed. That kind of goes without saying. As you see, the same has been applied here on the other side. You've got Alex Bolton, who is very, very pacey on the left and left footed. He's actually a replacement for Mario, who usually starts. You can see the same applies for him with his 18 agility, 17 acceleration, 17 pace. If they've got pace, if they've got good dribbling, they will be a menace for the opposition from these wide midfield spots. They're not even pushed up that high, but you will see them get into the byline really, really often in this tactic. By the way, just looking at the player instructions for the wingers, you can see them here. Shoot less often, run with ball, cross more often, stay wide, the dribble more, mark tighter, tackle harder, as you can see. Same for both sides. In fact, one change for the left-hand side is that I've got Alex Bolton to cross from the byline. That's just because of how they interact with the strikers ahead of them. So the left midfielder does actually cross from the byline Botter, you'll see on the right-hand side, will do that as well. But that's just the player instructions for those two. Into the center of midfield, two roles here. A DLP, a deep line playmaker, alongside a box-to-box -box midfielder. Now, I think, starting with the DLP, which is Mikhail Cuisance for me, I think this is the most important player in your team. This person is like the fulcrum. It's where everything will happen from. I mean, they are the playmaker, so I suppose that makes sense. But there are a few things to consider here. You see the instructions here. Pass it shorter is the one that pops up at the top. Mickey C is so successful because one, he's left footed. He plays on the left hand side of that center of midfield. Doesn't have to be left footed, but if you can make them left footed, I think they're going to be even more effective. The thing that makes Mickey C or Mikel Cuisant so effective is the fact that he has 17 corners. He's got good vision. He's got good passing and technique, which you want from a centre midfielder, which you want from a playmaker. He's got 17 corners, though. Let me show you his record from these corners. 20 assists, 24 assists, 21 assists. This season here, all competitions, he got 39 assists. He is the main person in this team. And it's so important you find yourself a set-piece taker here because this DLP, for some reason, won't get great ratings unless they take those set pieces. Mikhail Cuisance has got a 7.58 average rating for the season. If he wasn't on set pieces, that would be a six point something and it would not be as good. So just bear that in mind. It is definitely something to try and recruit for. If you can get this role here in your team to take the set pieces, you will be most effective. I've done that before with James Ward-Prowse in other saves, who's been obviously really, really good. We did a video where we won him a Ballon d'Or because we played him in a very similar system to this as a deep line playmaker. So bear that in mind. Alongside him, you are going to have a box-to-box -box midfielder. You want this box-to-box -box midfielder really to be all action. You want them to have a bit of pace, a bit of dynamism in that midfield. You want them to be all action. And that's really the type of profile I'd be looking for. Somebody who can run with the ball. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain has done this role really effectively because he has that bit of pace and a bit of movement in that midfield. And then finally, moving on through to the strikers, we're going to play with these two strikers like this. Jer Bruno and Hans Gruber are the two that I use in my save. Pressing forward on the left, you see their instructions there. These are quite important. I'd make sure you put these in. Marking specific position is the one that you want to look at. I have my left striker marking the right center back, if that makes sense. They get really close to them and it makes it really effective going forward. You can have your other striker doing that on the other side if you like as well, but I've not set mine to do that at the moment. We have a pressing forward on the left, an advance forward on the right. You see their instructions there. In these positions, you want players specifically on the left, if you can, for this pressing forward, to be left-footed. I use Jer Bruno, as you can see here. He has helped himself to 28 league goals in 30 games this year. Pretty good in his first season at the club. Pacey, strong, good finishers. Obviously, all the things you want in a striker, good off the ball, good technique, good composure. Those things are obviously important for FM. If you can make them left-footed and have good dribbling, these left forwards, these left strikers here in the pressing forward role will drift quite wide and almost act like a kind of tucked in winger, which is quite important. They will be the main assist maker for your other striker, which in my case is Hans Gruber, Peter Gruber, who is pacey, good at finishing, all the things you want in a striker, an advanced forward, very simplistic. He's got 54 and 84 for us. This season, I think he's got how many? 24 and 27 in the league. Just going back to Jer Bruno, you know how I said he'd be the assist maker? 14 assists from this left striker position. That's because of that role that he takes up in the team. 20 assists, all competition. Those are the player roles. That's the tactic. This is the 4-4-2. There is, as I mentioned, a download link in the description below this video. If you are gonna go and use that download link and use this tactic in your saves, all I ask of you is to give this video a like 
and drop a sub on the channel. If you do that, I'll be very, very thankful and it's yours. Go and use it. Go and enjoy it. Leave me a comment. Who are you managing and who are you going to try this tactic out with? That can be the comment you leave down below. Hopefully it works. Good luck in your saves. I really hope it's useful. But thank you so much for watching today. Any questions, let me know in comments as well. Oh, and now you've finished watching this video, go and watch the set pieces video I made because that can get you so many goals in your save too. This, this is the best tactic you can use on FM21. You've...